now that we have learned about React Router and how it enables us to navigate to various views within our application, it's time to move on to working on our React application to integrate React Router into our application and then make use of it to navigate to various views in our application. To get started on this exercise, the very first step is to install the React Router. So add the prompt, type yarn add React Router DOM at 4.2.2 or npm install React Router DOM uh, at 4.2.2 minus minus save and then go ahead and install the React Router into our project. Once the router is installed, it's time to go and configure our application to make use of React Router. Going to our application, in the app.js file, we will first import browser router from React Router DOM and then go ahead and surround this main with the browser router here. Now, once we do this, then our application is now configured to make use of the React router. Having completed configuring app.js file, Let's add in one more component into our application. So we will add in a home component into our application, and then we will use the React Router to let us navigate from the home component to the menu component. Now, in a later exercise, we will integrate dish detail component also as a separate view into our application. So the, as a next step to add in the home component, let's go to the components folder and then add a new file and name it as homecomponent.js. And in this file, I will configure a very simple home component to start with. In the next exercise, we will go ahead and configure this home component with more details. So for the moment, let me just import React from React and then we'll define function home so we, I am defining this home component as a function component, and then we'll return a simple div with the class name container, as you would expect within a components view. So we'll return that and then just return a h4 with home for the moment. So this would just render home in the view there. And then export home from the home component. And once we have done this, let's go to the main component and then configure the main component to make use of the React Router to enable us to navigate between the home and the menu component. So let's go ahead and save the changes and then go into the main component. Within the main component, let me import the home component. And then we'll go ahead and configure the main component to enable us to navigate between the two. So going in here, um, I'm going to import the switch route and redirect components from React Router DOM. We have already briefly talked about these three React Router components in the lecture. 
and then go ahead and configure the main component. And within the main component, I'm going to remove this selected dish from here. Later on, we will find a new way of navigating and supplying the selected dish to the dish detail component. So I'm going to remove the on dish detail um, method also from here because we won't be needing that anymore. And then going into the render page. I'm going to remove this detail component and also I will remove the menu component from here. Now within this render function I'm going to now use the switch component to enclose a couple of routes into my main component. So we will route to the two views that we have just created, the home component with, that we just created, and then also to the menu component. We will add in a couple more components in the next exercise and also in the assignment that follows. So the first route that I'm going to introduce is with the URL path name home. So when you have a URL ending with slash home, then this will route me to this particular component that is going to act as the view here. And the component's name would be home page. Now I'm going to show you how we create this home page component and why I create a separate home page component in a short while, function component in a short while. The second route I'm going to introduce is with the exact path. So as you see, when I say exact, that means that the path should match this exact path name. Now it'll become more clear why I use exact here, because when we route to the dish detail component also, we will use a path that starts with slash menu. So that's why when I say exact here, that means that the path should exactly match this with nothing else beyond menu. Only then we will route to this particular component, the menu component. So how do I specify the menu component? If it is just a component which re doesn't require any um, additional attributes or props to be passed to it, then I can just simply specify the name of the component. So I could have just said menu here and then it'll work fine. But then this approach of specifying the component will not allow me to pass in any props to the menu component. If I need to pass in props to the to a component through the specification of the route here, then I will have to pass that in as a function component. So I'm creating a function component in line here by specifying this here. So we'll say function component menu, and then I'll say dishes is this state dishes and then we will close off the menu component. So notice how I specified the menu component here. So the component specification here as, as you see being specified here. The reason we specify it like this here is because this way I can pass in a props to the menu component. Now in this case, my menu component will only receive dishes. It won't receive the uh, on-click method uh, anymore because we will have a different way of um, showing the various dishes, which we will implement in a later exercise. And then let me close off the route here. So we have two routes that we have defined here, one to the home and one to the menu, and both of these are, are enclosed inside the switch component. So this will switch between the routes based upon how we specify the URL in the browser address bar here. Now also in addition, I will make use of the redirect to specify a default route so we'll say if 
the route does not match any one of these, either home or menu, then I will redirect to home. So anything that doesn't match home or menu will be redirected to home for the moment. So this will be the default uh, path to. In addition, I haven't defined this home page here. So let me define a function component for the home page here. So one way you can supply a component is this, where I have defined the function component inline. The other way would be for me to explicitly declare the function component. So here I'll say const home page equal to, as you can see, I am using an arrow function here to define my function component. And within this, I will return Home. Now, later on, I will pass in additional attributes to the home or props to the home component when we configure the home component in more detail in one of the later exercises. Let's save the changes. Going to the browser, you now see what the browser is rendering. It is rendering the home component. So as you realize, if I simply specify the URL as that, so um, just the default server address, then that will automatically get redirected to the home component because I specified that if the URL path does not match anything, then you will redirect it to the home component. So if I try to load that, you will see that that will automatically redirect me to the home component here. And so that is how. So this part of the URL here is used to help navigate between the various views. So if I navigate to the menu component, I would have to type in menu here, and then I will be able to navigate to the menu component. So as you can see, this is how I would navigate between the two components. But of course, as, as you realize, this is a dumb way of navigating by typing things into the address bar. But you see that the router is working. So if I type in menu, I'll be able to go to the menu component. Now, if I type in home, I'll be able to go to the home component. If I just type in just the address, you will see that I'll be redirected to the home component automatically. So my router is already working there, allowing me to navigate between the various views by simply changing the URL here. But Ideally, I would want to have the navigation built into my nav bar here and also to activate these links so that if I click on them, I will be able to navigate to the various views of my application. So how do we do that? We'll go into the header component and then configure our nav bar to contain the links that will help me to navigate between the various views of the application. Going back to the application, let's now go into the header component. And in the header component, along with the navbar and navbar brand, I am also going to import nav, navbar toggler, which you will see me using in a short while, and then collapse and nav item. All these I would be needing in order to construct the links in my nav bar, the various navigation elements in my nav bar. So after having imported these, I will also import nav link. Recall I talked about nav link in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, so we'll import nav link from React Router DOM. And when we apply nav link, it'll add an A tag to the link and also automatically add the active if the uh, URL matches what is being specified in the nav link there. So that's the reason for introducing the nav link. Now, going into my header components code, now I'm going to fix up this part to add the my nav bar further. Now, for the nav bar itself, I will specify that the nav bar 
will be shown in its full form only for medium to extra large screen sizes. So this is Bootstrap's uh, way of specifying. So in, in, from Bootstrap, you realize that we were able to collapse the nav bar for responsive website layout. We were collapsing the nav bar for uh, extra small and small screen sizes. The same thing that we specify in React Strap by simply adding this attribute here, expand equal to MD. If you say expand is equal to SM, so for small to extra large screen sizes, the nav bar will be shown in its full form. Uh, so that's the reason for adding this here. Now going into the code here, for the nav bar brand, I'm going to add in a class name as MR Auto. So the MR Auto from, uh, from Bootstrap's uh, course, you realize that this will add a right margin uh, as much as necessary there. And also instead of using the name of the restaurant like we do here, I'm going to replace that with an image here. So within the navbar brand, I'm going to use an image to represent the uh, name of the restaurant. So I'll introduce a logo for the restaurant. So I'll say image source is assets images logo.png. And then for this image, I will specify the height as 30 and width as 41. Now this is something that I figured out by adjusting these numbers until I got a logo that is reasonable looking. And the alternative I will specify the name of the restaurant. So that's the image that I'm going to add into the nav bar. Now, in addition, let's add in the links that will enable us to, um, to navigate to the various views of our application. To do that, I'm going to take the help of the nav um, class in React Strap, which is also mapping to the nav class in Bootstrap, and then the nav class. In here, I am going to use the nav item to define each of the navigational items that I'm going to include in my nav bar. So nav nav bar, nav item. So what are the various nav items that I'm going to include here? Now this is where I will use the nav link. Recall we uh, imported nav link um, from React Router DOM. For the nav link, how do you specify the nav link? Uh, we'll give it a class name as nav link. The nav link class is from Bootstrap, which uh, styles the link appropriately to fit it into the nav bar. And then here for the nav link, I can specify the URL to which it should navigate by saying to. And then the first one would be to the home page. So I'll say to home and close off the nav link. So that is how I will define my first nav link in my nav bar there. Now inside this nav link, I can specify, I'm going to use uh, font awesome icons here. So we'll say span class name FA, FA home, FA LG. If you recall from your bootstrap course earlier, we saw how we introduce the font awesome icons into our nav bar and then this would be the home link here so this arrangement here with the nav item will add a home link into my nav bar there let me copy that and create three more of these here the second one would be a nav link to about us so we'll introduce an about us page 
for which the corresponding icon would be info and then we'll say about us here. The next one would be a link to menu. So we'll say nav link to menu. And so now you see that when you click on this nav link, this should take you to the menu view or the menu components view in your in your page. And for this, the font awesome icon is FA list here. And this would be menu. And then one more nav item that I'm going to add here. And this last nav item is to this uh, link called contact us. And then this would be the font awesome icon is FA address card. And the, the name of the link would be contact us here. So now I have introduced inside this nav here, I've introduced four links into the nav bar to home, about us, menu, and contact. Now we want to show this nav, nav bar completely only for medium to extra large screen sizes. For extra small and small screen sizes, we want to collapse this. So to collapse this for extra small to small uh, screen sizes, I'm going to make use of the collapse React Strap component. And so we will apply the collapse Re React Strap component to the nav bar. In addition, I need to add some more things to that. I'll come back to do that in a minute. And then we'll close off the collapse. So this collapse encloses this entire navigation links that I have in this nav nav bar here. Now, in order to toggle this collapse on and off, I'm going to introduce a button here into my navigation bar. And this is where I will use the nav bar toggler. So the nav bar toggler uh, React Strap component adds in a button to the nav bar, and this button will be shown only on extra small to small screen sizes. For medium to extra large screen sizes, this button will be hidden. So for the nav bar toggler, we'll say on click. So when this toggler is clicked, then we will call this. Toggle nav. So this would be a function that I'm going to implement, a, a handler, on click handler that I'm going to implement in a short while. So when this navbar toggler is shown, when you click on this, this uh, nav links will be expanded and shown. This navbar will be expanded and shown. When you click on that, it will be hidden for extra small to small screen sizes. Now to, for this collapse to work, the collapse also requires a, another attribute called ease open. Now this ease open will be a Boolean attribute which I will define in my state called this state ease open. So this Boolean attribute is what we will specify to this collapse. If this is false, then whatever is inside this collapse will be hidden. If this is true, then whatever is inside this collapse will be shown here. Now this, we will toggle this from true to false and false to true by clicking the nav bar toggler button that we have in included here. So that also suggests what this toggle nav should be doing. So having understood this, let's go back up into our header component and we realize that I need this state for this header component. So uh, where do we store the state? In the header component, we store state by using the constructor. Recall how we use the constructor um, for a class component. Now in the previous exercise, when I created the header component, I created it as a class component and I told you 
that I will explain in the next exercise why we created it as a class component. Now you see why I am created that as a class component because I need to store some uh, state information here. So that's the reason why I created it as a class component. Now, how do we store state? We'll say this state equal to, and within the link here, we'll store this as is nav open false. So uh, I'm going to use is nav open rather than is open. So this would be this state is nav open because this is the state uh, property that is going to store whether this is open or not. But the attribute itself should be named is open or the props that you pass in should still be named is open. Okay, and then this is the toggle nav method that we have implemented. So in the state, I am introducing this new uh, property here called is nav open. Now, whenever this nav bar toggler is clicked, I want to toggle this to true and false or toggle this, its value. Whatever the value is, I want to toggle it to the opposite. So, which means that I need to implement this method called this toggle nav. So where, where do we implement this? We will implement this as a method inside this class here, toggle nav. What should I do inside this toggle nav method? I need to change this uh, from uh, or toggle this value. Um, so to toggle that value, recall that that means that I need to change the state. To change the state, we need to use the this set state method for doing this. So that's why we'll say this set state, and then we'll say is nav open is this state is nav open. So what we are doing is whatever it is its value, we are negating that value. So if it is false, it will become true. If it is true, it will become false. So whenever this is executed, the value will be swapped. Now, when you have a method like this in here, in React, in order to make this method available for use within your um, JSX, you need to bind this in your code. So to do this, right up here in the constructor, we would say this toggle nav, this toggle nav bind this. So by doing this here, we are specifying that this toggle nav will now become available as this toggle nav, this um, uh, JavaScript variable toggle nav will be pointing to this function that, that the, and is by, bound to this. So that's why in the code, I can simply specify the on click as this toggle nav. Earlier, you recall that we used to do that as a function, as an arrow function. That's one way of doing it. This is another way of doing it. We'll bind it here in the constructor of the component. And this is how you bind it. So we'll say this toggle nav, whatever is the name of the function. And then we'll say this toggle nav bind this. So when you bind this, then we will be able to, so as you can see, for a given function creates a bound function that has the same body as the original function. That this object of this bound function is associated with a specific object and so on. So that is how we bind this. There, thereby, in my JSX code, I can specify this dot toggle nav wherever I want to invoke this function here. Now, of course, we can't pass in any parameter to this and we don't need any parameter to this uh, uh, method anyway. So it works just fine for us. So with this change to my header component, now my header component is ready. Let's go and take a look at our application. Going to our application, you now see that in the nav bar, we have replaced the name of the restaurant with its corresponding logo, which is shown in a small size here. And then we have now links here, which when we click will help us to navigate to the various views of our application. 
So when I click on the menu, so the menu is shown here. When I click on home, I can go back to the home component. Now, if I click on about us, since about us and contact us pages don't exist. So when those links are sent into the route, the switch realizes that there is nothing uh, corresponding to those particular links because we haven't specified the route for them. So it will redirect it to home. So that's why when you click on about or contact, you're back to the home component. You're not going anywhere else. But when you click the menu, you'll go to the menu component and back to the home component. So now we have completed implementing our um, uh, application to make use of even the navbar links and then show this in the navbar. Now let's go back and fix up the links in the footer also to enable us to do the same thing as the header. Going back to our application, let me open the footer component and in the footer component, I will go in and modify this. So to, to each one of these, we will not use the ahref. Instead, we will import link from React Router DOM. Recall that I introduced you to the link class. We don't need nav link here, but we can just use link here. And so in here, we'll specify, we'll mo modify each of each one of these into a corresponding link here. So we'll say link. And then when I use a link, I will need to specify that as two. And then we'll say home because home is the, the corresponding URL path to the home component. So we'll say link, note how this is specified, link to home. And then this has to be changed to link. Let me go ahead and apply the same thing to the remaining ones. So for the about us page, this would be link to about us. While I am here, let me fix that to about us and then change that to link. The third one, the menu would be link to menu. And similarly, the last one would be link to contact us. Let me fix that to contact us there. And so we have updated these four links. So with this change, now my four links here are set up also to help me to navigate to the various pages in the footer component. Let's save the changes and take one final look at the application. Going back to the application, we now see that we are on the home page. When you click on the menu, we'll be taken to the menu page in the footer component. Similarly, when you click on about us, we are brought back to the home page or contact us, we are brought back to the home page and similarly the home page here. Now, we had introduced the collapse for this. Now, this is a medium screen size, so that's why my um, entire uh, nav bar with the links is shown completely. Now, if you want to see the same thing in a um, extra small or small screen size, we'll take this down to open the developer tools in, um, so to open the developer tools, view developer developer tools in Chrome, uh, you would have some something similar to this in the other browsers also. Uh, Safari also has developer tools uh, in a different uh, menu uh, link there. And similarly for um, the other browsers, but I prefer to use Chrome for illustrating things. So I am showing you how we do this in Chrome. So in here, when you turn on the developer tools, we can turn and click on this. And then this will enable us to see the rendering of the page in various devices. So for example, I can go to a Pixel 2 device. So this is how the page will be rendered on a Pixel 2 screen in portrait mode. So you can see that my uh, 
nav bar is collapsed with this nav bar toggle button shown here and then of course the logo shown here when i click on this button you can see that the nav bar is revealed and closed so that is the difference that we have introduced into the pixel 2 now the same thing in this is in portrait uh, sorry in landscape mode on a pixel 2 device a slightly larger screen so this would be a small screen size again this is probably more clearer for you to see how the navig nav bar is being toggled by clicking on this button here and the footer is appropriately styled already down below here with this we complete this exercise in this exercise we have seen how we can configure our react application to make use of the react router this is a good time for you to do a git commit with the message react router.